Uh, my name is Reed Burke. Um, I'm on the YUI team at Yahoo. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a project I'm working on, um, which involves using Node.js for something where it isn't accessory to something. Um, and it's also not just Node.js and just server-side JavaScript. What I'm, what I'm working on is actually um, with the goal of making client-side JavaScript both easier to use for developers as well as just way more performant. Um, and there's can be a, there can be a coexistence of these two things um, using YUI Loader. So basically, we all agree that performance of web apps is really important, right? Um, but it's way too hard. Um, it shouldn't be, though. Um, so what something with YUI that, that we've had since the third version um, and made a part of its core is that everything, you, you should only get what you need, right? You shouldn't have to load the entire library. You shouldn't have to have all this complexity um, of, of having everything on your page and worrying about um, the, the additional cost of parsing all this stuff and downloading all this stuff and everything. So you, you use only what you need with YUI. Um, and Apps built with it can also leverage the same kind of thing, um, and that's that's kind of the whole this whole thing that we've had with YUI. Um, but the problem with this, um, it's it's really good for the developer, but it's not so great for. Um, and we could probably work on making developer tools better for this, and that I'll cover this um, in my talk. But whenever you find this, you also find dependency management. So how do you do that? Well, one way is with the configurator. So what we had, we've had this configurator for a really long time since YUI2, um, back when YUI2 had a loader. And the idea is that you know if you want just certain parts, you can put this in here, and it tells you all the modules that you need, and it gives you a combo URL, which most people in the room would be familiar with. It's basically just concatenating all these modules um, that are, that are used by by what you what you need, and then puts it into one URL. Um, and so one way or another, you're, you're doing this by either a build script that's doing this, or you're using this service, or you're hosting your own combo-like service or something, right? Um, I don't think this is the answer. And so the reason for this is that manually updating a combo URL every time you change something um, isn't scalable. Why isn't it scalable? Well, you think about it. Your application isn't usually just one page. You have a lot of different parts of your website. You know, you may not have a, need an autocomplete widget on every page. You may not need to have a scroll view on every page. You may not need um, your own component on every page. And so you want to be able to have your templates or parts of your application um, to just include what they need, right? And that I don't think is really easy. Um, and if it's easy, if if you can do it, it's you, it's not that great for performance. Um, so. This is the easy API that YUI3 gives you. Um, and there's other, I'm, I'm going to talk about, there's, there's more than just YUI is not the only library that does this. There are other ways to do it, and you, you should be using them um, and finding, finding a way to make it work. Um, but it's baked in, and it's, it's uh, scripts only have to tell the page what it needs. And so if you're using something like this or making modules with YUI um, or with something like require.js, basically you're, you're Modules, your little JavaScript files that that do implement specific bits of functionality. That's what um, defines um, what what's needed on the page, right? So you could just throw in the modules you want, and they can declare their own dependencies. And so that's something that's a really great way to make an application. Um, and it's it's what you guys should aspire to do, but it's not always performant, and that's why we have people who are going in and copy and pasting something out of here, um, or going in and actually, you know, maybe you don't even have a nice tool like this, um, and you're you're just figuring out how to um, combine this with shell scripts or whatever, and that isn't something I think we should accept, right? We should have an API that's this simple, whether it's YUI or not, and it should be something that um, that's also performant. Um, and so again, I, I want to I stress that the, the reason why we use modules, and there's going to be two great talks after mine that are going to talk about um, JavaScript frameworks and modules. And you notice this is really common. The reason why we're doing this is because it's, you're, we're delivering less code. It's only what your users need, right? Um, you're, it's going to increase performance because you're, you're having less code that's um, you're delivering. Even with a fast connection, you still need to parse it. That's especially significant on mobile, right? Um, even with fast JavaScript, you know, there's a lot of competition with JavaScript engines um, in browsers, and that's great. Um, and that's only going to continue, but that doesn't excuse um, the um, um, forgetting about performance, right? Um, it also manages complexity, so it makes things easier on you. Um, so the problem is that, yeah, there, there needs to be a way for things to be more performant. Um, that's because with YUI3, you have this simple API, but one, running YUI loader on the client side isn't free, right? It actually takes, it takes time. It doesn't take that long, but it takes time for um, these dependencies to be worked out. You also have to transfer all the metadata about all the modules that you're using on the page to the client so that it knows about 
say when I ask for YQL, it knows that it needs some module like JSONP, it needs a module like, um, um, or it needs uh, its submodules or, or what have you, right, um, as, as things that it requires. And doing all that is expensive. Even though you can cache, um, we, could, we could send things with far future expires, right? Um, like the, for the module metadata download and the YUI seed file and um, all this, parsing metadata and calculating from it isn't cache and it happens over and over. Um, one thing that, incidentally, one thing that we, we're trying to do to improve the performance of YUI Loader is actually take all that metadata for, say, the YUI library and put it into some kind of local storage mechanism. Um, and that didn't work as well as we hoped because it turns out that still taking it out of local storage and then parsing this huge JSON blob with everything that you would possibly use um, takes about just as much time as just doing the calculation with, ca with stuff that the, the way that we used to. Um, and so basically we think we could do a little bit better with this. We think we have an okay API and we could probably even make tools for, um, for you know, making modules that work with YUI better uh, as well. But, you know, in order to get there, we need to have a really good, we don't want to just say this is, this makes it easier on developers. We want you guys to have a reason to use it. Um, you know, a reason where it's not only just helps you guys, but it makes your website faster. And that's what I want to do with my project. Um, I've, we put YUI Loader as a web service, um, and we call it uh, YUI Loader Server, or YLS. And so the first thing this lets you do is you can, you could just pass it modules to load. Um, like say if I want the drag drop module, um, what this has done is um, I have this running locally. And for YUI 330, um, it's just loading the drag drop module. And you can see at the, it's loading all of its dependencies that it needs. And uh, drag drops at the very bottom. But you can pass other things to this as well. So say I want to have the debug version of this. And you can get that. It's just doing this on the fly. This is running a course in Node.js um, using YUI loader. Um, you could pass you know, whatever you want in the end of this. Um, so if I want, you could just pass a list, right? But this isn't really what I came to talk about. This is kind of neat in that you no longer have to go through. Um, I'm trying to show the end of it, but it doesn't really matter. Um, like, it, this, is, this is all neat and all. Um, let's see, go back. Cool. But there's a better way, and that's just using YUI use. Okay, so with, with YLS, we kept the same API, right? But we, we added extreme performance to it. Um, but basically, this, this extreme performance is on par with something that where you'd have to go through the painful way of using, um, or, uh, using your own um, build script or YUI configurator or whatever. Um, instead, you could just have you know, small JavaScript files that, that implement pieces um, of functionality and actually have them declare the dependencies and have it work um, just as well, that's the goal, just as well as if you were doing stuff the hard way. Um, and so instead of downloading, parsing, and calculating modded dependencies like we used to with YUI, we now ask YLS for them. And so a request would look something like this, right? Um, where we give um, information about what module we want, YQL, um, what we have on the page, and that's E and V right here, and what we have on the page is YUI, um, what version of YUI, and tests, and I'll get into tests in a little bit, but we think that feature testing is very important. Um, and so what we're doing is actually we're telling the, we're, we're transferring state about what tests have passed and failed um, on the browser and actually transferring that over to the server. So it's very fast because we don't have, um, we're, we're running this calculation on the server and uh, it's, it's, it always winds up being faster than what, what someone has, especially if they're on a phone. Um, and you don't need to download and parse module metadata like you did before. Uh, but the real win is, is the first one. Um, but this is that. This is the huge win. This is what's really exciting is that it's, it's whenever you go to the next page, the entire response has been cached. So what this means is that the first time anyone visits um, some, a, a page on your website, um, the, this URL, right, this, this URL at the bottom, that's already been accessed. If it's, if it's someone on the same browser with the same test configuration, uh, it's, been, it's been accessed, it's cached, it's, um, it's, it's, on a, um, it's cached at least on, on Yahoo's side, right, or on, on the person serving YLS's side. And so that means that um, um, your other users will, will take advantage of that. And if it's, if it's, if it's uh, the person has visited the page and they're getting that fast thing off of, um, off of the server cache that we have, but then it's in their browser cache, um, no more dependency calculation has to happen on the client anymore. Um, and it never, it never did, but now it's, it's, it doesn't have to, it, it's all local and you don't have to do, go through any hoops to determine all the modules here because that, that already happened by that, by that request being available. 
Um, so right, in the browser with far feature expires, and then in the server with its own caching layer um, that's baked into the server, not just Yahoo's own, but the one that, that's going to ship with the open source bit of it. Um, and this is personal, so um, it's, it's not just for YUI. The, the goal of the, in the architecture of the system is that it can work with modules that are outside of YUI. YUI gallery, two and three, your own modules. These all should work really well, and you should be able to import them into this and use them um, just like we can for YUI itself. So I want to give you uh, a, a reason why I'm so excited about this. Um, and so I want to show you the, the speed difference, right? And this is, this is you know, something we tried to do by putting things into local storage and then getting them out. Um, and it wasn't nearly as impressive. So what I'm going to show you is basically, um, again, I want to reiterate that an initial page load is, is going to always be a little bit faster since no metadata is downloaded in the server side. JavaScript calculates faster and everything. Um, but what I'm going to show you is when, you, when someone else has ran this once, right, when you've visited a page already, um, the cost of YUI loader right now continues to, you continue to have to do it, calculate dependencies, um, even though the, um, the combo URL is, is already um, cached in the browser. So basically what I'm saying is that no matter, even though we can cache responses coming back from the server, the thing is we still have to run this JavaScript calculation as you navigate around the page uh, or navigate this to the same page or if another visitor visits, they can't take advantage of this calculation that already happened. And so what we've done is we've taken all these, instead of having, you know, 100 users calculate this themselves, we can now have once, you know, one person do it. Um, and so it's no slower than, than it was before, right? Since it's, it's the same thing, but just happening in one place. And then everyone takes advantage of it, right? And so that's what I'm going to show you is the difference between Keeping it, um, keeping it, everyone doing it versus um, having it already done once, um, and that's that's the whole purpose of, of this thing. Um, and so this is running on Chrome, um, and we're showing loading different various combinations of stuff: client-side loader versus YLS. Um, and it, it it can vary as well. So this is just an example, but it's always faster, um, sometimes dramatically so. So. Um, if I move this in a new, into actually a new renderer, it actually winds up being even faster. Um, but this is actually even more profound on mobile devices. Even with the latest iOS, um, we're seeing differences of, um, of things cut in half, like 900 milliseconds, 950 milliseconds, all the way down to um, 450. Um, the Wi-Fi here is, is unfortunately, eh, I can't get my phone on it right now. So <laughs> um, but let, me, let me run this, in this again and j just to see how it can fluctuate. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit faster, and that's a lot faster. This is with the, I just opened a new tab. That's the only thing I did. I've had the presentation open for about a day, so. So you can see it's, this is what's really exciting. And what we're comparing is 106 for this combination to 30, right? 58 to 14, 44 to 43. Um, and even in a less than ideal situation, that was still, it was still wound up being faster. And so that's, that's pretty exciting. And again, um, with, y, with the next version of YUI that'll have this client-side support in it, you'll be able to host this yourself, um, and hopefully even with your own modules, right? But that's, you won't need to because we'll provide this on our CDN. And that we do this already. We have a CDN combo handler. When you looked at YUI Configurator, that's, we're, we're, that's something we host. But we're going to provide this on our own CDN, um, and it's just enabled with a simple configuration flag. So you just tell, say that you want to use this feature, and you get it. Um, when we're building this, this is some of the things that we we wanted to keep in designing this kind of system. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go through this really quick. Um, Capability-based loading is really important. So um, we have a uh, excuse me a uh, we have we wanted to transfer state over to the um, to the server uh, of all the things that are on there. So we we transfer all these tests and stuff that's already on the page is sent as well, like you saw earlier. Um, and so this is cache friendly. So we don't, this isn't a unique URL. It's if someone came with the same browser, they would get the same response. Um, we're using this already in yualibrary.com. Um, we're working to bring this to everyone. Um, some other things uh, to take away from this is uh, server-side YUI is what, what I'm using to do this. It's already open source and out there. Um, it allows YUI to r easily run on Node. Um, and really, the loader part of this is actually already open source. So um, what, what's not is, the, is kind of the tools and everything around it that we're still working on. Um, scaling this, though, is something I really want to well, want to show you guys um, is if you're, if you're working with anything that involves an expensive JavaScript computation, um, JavaScript single-threaded. So when, when you're working with something that's that um, that's blocking in JavaScript, that server requests will pile up. 
um, and it's important to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So we did a simple test of this on a machine with two cores just to show you the difference between running YUI loader in the same um, instance of, of Node.js as a server versus just putting it out um, in a separate process and then communicating with it um, over a socket. And um, the difference is huge. So what we're seeing is this is this is running with two workers and this is running with just everything in line, but with separated out the traditional Node.js scaling way, right? Which is just to, to use Spark 2 or Cluster or something like that uh, for spawning different things. And this is the big part, right? So this is the performance we used to see taking up to three, three or almost four seconds. Um, and now everything is this nice low thing right down here and that's really nice um, so you want to avoid blocking anything if you're doing image processing working with binary data stuff like this that can block even if it's just for um, 50 milliseconds 100 milliseconds you want to be very careful because things will start queuing up outside of outside of uh, the stuff and that actually causes memory to use it to explode um, like really really bad explode on node.js so um, so we're using web workers by Peter Grice and that's an awesome library to use um, Again, blowing through this stuff really quick. Um, this isn't as interesting, but really what I want to show you is this. We, this is interesting just because we, we tested different combinations and it wasn't what we expected. Instead of running one master with 16 slaves, we ran uh, 16 YUI workers. We actually ran one master with, with uh, uh, or uh, 16 masters with one YUI worker, and that wound up being most performant because that's what you see down here in green, where we have this nice, um, even when we put it up to 400 requests per second, we still get um, a nice, nice flat line with this configuration right here. That's great. Um, and this is the improvement we made from, this is the inline. When you inline things, it takes 1.2 seconds on our production hardware um, to run to run, uh, to run just all of the different tests that we have with going all, all over uh, different con configurations of modules versus this green line, which is running things with, with one web worker. So that makes a big difference. So you want to make sure you're doing that. Um, what you don't see in this graph is memory, too, which explodes, which is not good. Um, if you're using long, t if you're doing this for the long run, uh, which I encourage you to when you're writing Node.js stuff that you go through um, and stress test the stuff, right? Um, you want to make sure that you're using something like HTTP perf. Um, and that's something that was written by HP. It's very old. There's papers written about it, so you know that that's the kind of thing you should be using. Um, node, load wor node load works really well for, for stuff that's, you know, like I've used it for stuff that's 10, 30 minutes. Um, but what I've actually noticed is when I ran a 72-hour test with node load, I saw that my, perf my server performance was just going through the floor. And it turns out it wasn't my server. It was node load, right? So you want to make sure that you're not, you're not you know, giving yourself grief by, by using tools um, like that or for something they're not meant for, right? Node load works really, really well for, um, and gives you a lot of great data for small, short test runs. Um, and so another thing I want to go over really quick is how um, what we're doing to test YUI use to make sure that this is really robust for the release um, that we are going to do later this year of 3.4.0 is use um, sandbox iframes for unit testing, uh, which is really useful for um, if you need to test things that um, require a clean browser environment for each run. And this is on the YUI gallery. So I encourage you to look more into that as well. Um, some things with Connect. Um, if, you, if you're curious about, I, I'm almost out of time. So if you're curious about this kind of stuff, um, come and see me. I would love to talk more about it. Um, and um, JSLint's really nice. There's a node tool that I wrote for JSLint that's really nice. Um, Pact is something that I've used for testing HTTP servers. Um, and it, it, you could do it in a really expressive way. And I want to show that really quick here. Um, so actually, this one. Uh, no, this one. So let's see. So. Um, this is really nice. So I could just write tons of these things where I have, um, with Pact, I can just have the URL and, it, and just have a topic thing as request. This is using the Vows uh, Node.js test framework. Um, and it's, it, it's really easy. And this, this kind of extends off the last talk uh, just because, you know, I don't, if I want to add a new test, it's really easy for me to do it with Pact. Um, and that's really helpful. Um, and then annotated code, I had that, but I didn't show it. Um, so right, this is really hard on the client side, which is why this isn't available yet, but we're hoping in the next few months to, to have this out for you guys. Um, so something that I think would be really interesting, and if you, any of you guys know people that work on like required.js or if you're doing something like this yourself, um, I would love to talk to them because I think this is a generic problem that we could, we could really um, have. Um, you know, this, there's no reason why you'd have to use YUI on the client side to ha use a technology like this, right? And so I would love to have this be the way that, you know, to, to manage your application's um, JavaScript dependencies. A um, lot of possibilities here. Um, so recap, client-side module loading is hard. 
this this system hopefully makes that easier. Um, and one size doesn't always fit all. Like the, the traditional Node.js scaling stuff didn't work for us, so we wanted to test it. Um, and if you guys are more interested in that, we've we are hoping to have this replace um, eventually replace the uh, and have the default way of using YUI um, be using the system. So it needs to needs to scale, and so that's what that's something that we're working on at Yahoo. Um, so if you're interested in that, please come talk to me. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.